Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you. Um, I'm enjoying the debate this afternoon. Indeed, I've kind of um, changed what I was going to talk about uh, initially, uh, uh, calling on my own experience as, a, a, as an IT professional. And it's really to, to follow up on what my colleague Emma Harper was, was indicating, is that there's lots of really, really good work going on out there. And I think we're in real danger of forgetting that and seeing how innovative Scotland is in responding to things like the IT skills gap, that um, we, we can top down the industry and, and maybe put people off. Um, I should declare... Yes, I'll take an in. Michael Mara. I mean, would the member not recognise then the Logan Review that was published by this government, by Mark Logan's own work, that recognised the huge skills gaps that there were in the, in the industry and the potential for growth and actually the necessity for growth? Speak to employers in my constituency who tell me software engineers are like hen's teeth. Claire Adamson. Absolutely, and I declare an interest as still being a member of the British Computer Society. But it's not just in Scotland, it's everywhere there's sh shortages in this area. And that's why we should be encouraging initiatives like Dress Code, which is a not-for-profit charity started by a computing teacher in, in Scotland that encourages young women to take up uh, computing in school and promotes um, coding in all sorts of areas, games design, but also in cyber security. It's really, a, in fact, a, I believe they're running a competition for a poster to encourage more women to take part in it. No, I've taken one intervention. I've only got four minutes, sorry. Um, and, and these initiatives are really making a difference to encouraging people to come forward. And also, um, one of the things I'm going to talk about, if I get back to my speech I planned to do this afternoon, was the way our educational establishments work with their communities and work in... in uh, partnership with people across Scotland to, to encourage people to, to take part in education. And one of those is the Open University and its Coding Skills Plus programme. Now, they responded to the COVID pandemic and, and there's 100 opportunities that were made available to a, a million pounds digital start fund that was managed by Skills Development Scotland. And it was all about taking on people who had been furloughed or made redundant as a result of COVID and training them 13 weeks intense training in IT to, to, to um, give them the skills they needed to take up these very productive, very highly played jobs that we want in Scotland. And I just feel that we have to, to do that and also point people to Scotland is. Scotland is, is doing an incredible amount of work in terms of encouraging people into IT in Scotland and presenting that. And we've so much to be thankful for in terms of the success of our games industry, the success of Abertay University and other universities that have taken up the games industry and are teaching people to code in it. Sorry, I'm not going to take another intervention. And this is where I wanted to be today because I really wanted to talk about um, coming back to my own constituency and the great work that's been done there with foundation apprenticeships. Um, I particularly had the, the joy of visiting with the Deputy First Minister a few years ago, Braidhurst High School, and they've really embedded that partnership with New College Lanarkshire. And New College Lanarkshire is an incredible college, um, exemplified by the success in the World Skills competitions, where they're taking young people each and every year um, to, to um, competitions within Britain and then to the wider world, exemplifying all the training that they are doing, skilling young people, and, and being an absolute exemplar of how this can work to encourage young people to take up apprenticeships that are so, so important going forward. And I, I just think that, you know, we're, the Young Persons Guarantee is such a great development and, and we can't forget just how important some of those um, initiatives have been in encouraging young people, in giving people confidence that they don't need to go to college or university, albeit that's a brilliant way for them to go forward. But there are opportunities through foundation uh, apprenticeships and through working and gaining those skills while they're working. But please, please, can we also have fair work? Please, no more discrimination against age because of uh, young people are paid less minimum wage. And please, can we also put an end to unfair work trials that are unpaid for our young people going forward? Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. Uh, I now call Tess White.